disbanded religion for 40 years. Religion was not practiced at all. 1990, the Castro government changed the constitution, which allowed religious practices again to be openly practiced. Of all the countries of Latin America, the Cubans know more about orthodoxy than the other average Latin American country because many of the Cubans, even those in power today, studied in Russia and therefore came in contact with the Orthodox Church in one way or another. In 1997, I made my first visit to Cuba, representing the Economical Patriarchate. I met with the assistant director who was responsible for Orthodox affairs specifically. And I said, well, we existed prior to the revolution. We register us response was, can't register church without a group of faithful. And I said, well, let me establish a community. I said, well, you can't because you don't have clergy. And I said, well, let me bring priests from Greece. Well, you can't because you're not registered. Well, then let me send some Cubans to Greece for studies to become priests. Well, you can't because you're not registered. I persisted. Every three, four months, I'd go back to Cuba. We need the church. It's orthodox. It's been consecrated. It belongs to us. You should return it to us. San Nicolás es una iglesia que fue fundada en el 2004 por el patriarca Bartolomeo I, nuestro patriarca, eh, su toda santidad Bartolomeo I, y por el comandante en jefe Fidel Castro. La iglesia fue hecha por trabajadores cubanos y los ingenieros son Pedro Gil y Jaime Ortega, dos magníficos ingenieros que fueron a estudiar a Grecia como era una iglesia bizantina para después regresar y elaborar esa joya que tenemos aquí en el Parque Teresa de Calcuta. community is multicultural, it's multinational, it's multilingual, and the church here in Cuba is really something special. It's the only church built by Fidel Castro's government in over 50 years. And uh, we have good relations with the Cuban government, which is very fortunate because it will allow the church here in Cuba to really grow. Enite ton kirio nectun eronon, enite afton entis ipsisis, alleluia. Enite ton kirio nectun eronon, enite afton entis ipsisis, alleluia. Enite ton kirio nectun eronon, enite afton entis ipsisis, alleluia. Toxa patrike, io che io pneumati, che ninchia i che su seones non non amin. In the yearbook of the archdiocese, there was a church of St. Constantine Helen that formerly existed in Cuba. It was closed after the Cuban Revolution. The Greeks and the Lebanese Orthodox who were there all left. So the community no longer existed. Uh, there were over 40,000 Russian soldiers in Cuba. So obviously there were those who were still faithful to whatever degree, so the church did open the church. Even though it was ours, Moscow has to open it, the Cuban government gave them the permission. And within six to eight months, the church closed again. And then somewhere in the mid 80s, in the area where the church was built, there exists a theater group. The church was abandoned, so the government gave them the use of the church. Uh, when I was elected as the archbishop, I felt that I had an obligation to try and have the church returned to us. At one point, I found out that the former king of Greece, King Constantine, was going to Cuba. I called the king in London, and I said, Your Majesty, I'm sure you're gonna be meeting with Castro. So if you can, I would like you to ask Fidel Castro to have the church return to us. And Castro gave his hand and said, no problem. But then the Minister of Foreign Affairs jumped in and said, uh, Mr. President, we do have some issues. The Russian church wants the church back too. And Fidel Castro simply responded, I gave my word, find a solution. In 2003, Castro presented the Ecumenical Patriarch with a letter of invitation to come to Cuba to consecrate the church. I thanked uh, 
of course, Mr. Castro for fighting the Patriarch. And he responded and said, Your Eminence, no. We thank you for bringing orthodoxy to Cuba. In Old Havana, there is a gentleman called Eusebio Leal. His official title is the Historiador de la Ciudad. Now, this is a man who's one of the top men in the Communist Party of Cuba, and yet a man with faith. About 30 years ago, Leal was given permission by the Cuban Parliament to renovate Old Havana, to be responsible for the renovation of all of this area. So Mr. Leal went to Fidel Castro and he said, Mr. President, I would like to build a church in Old Havana because I believe that in order for uh, the area to have a spiritual, international reputation, we need to have the Orthodox Church present there. So Mr. Dale walked me through this beautiful garden, which is on the outside wall of the former mission of St. Francis of Assisi. And this garden is protected by UNESCO now. Mr. Leal said, Your Eminence, would you like us to build you a church here? I mean, if, if that isn't a miracle, I don't know what is. They were very careful to gift us a church that today, I think in all of Latin America, and even in the United States, is a Byzantine jewel. The Cuban government officially treated our church with respect and with honor. La iglesia de San Nicolás es el centro de la ortodoxia en Cuba. Esta semana tuvimos varias actividades por la conmemoración del décimo aniversario de la fundación de la iglesia de San Nicolás. Fueron bautizados tres catecúmenos. Porque todos los que It was just very interesting watching the Cubans who have converted to Orthodoxy and their tremendous faith because I found over the years that people who the people who convert to Orthodoxy are are usually very passionate about about their about their newfound faith. And it was, it was really great to see that again, especially in, in a community such as Santa Cuba. Κάλεσε ο Μητροπολίτη ε, Κεντρώα ε, Αμερική, ο Μητροπολίτη Μεξικού, ο κ. Αθηναγόρα, να έρθω εδώ στην Κούβα γιατί γιορτάζουν 10 χρόνια από τα εγγένεια τη Εκκλησία, τη Ορθόδοξη Εκκλησία του Αγίου Νικολάου, εδώ στην Κούβα. Ο Δένα, Σαντο Σοβεγάνο, 
al que te presentamos. Εκείνο το οποίο μου έκανε πάρα πολύ εντύπωση και το οποίο με συγκίνησε ε, ήταν η χειροτονία ενός νέου κληρικού για την Εκκλησία μας, ε, ενός νέου ανθρώπου ε, που χειροτονήθηκε διάκονος και θα γίνει και πρεσβύτερος, θα γίνει ιερέας δηλαδή και ο οποίος είναι κουβανός. Δεν είναι Έλληνας, δεν έχει γονείς Έλληνες, δεν, προέρχεται, δεν έχει ελληνική καταγωγή, αλλά είναι ένα παιδί που έχει νιώσει την Ορθοδοξία, ζει μέσα στην Ορθοδοξία και αφιερώνει τη ζωή του ολόκληρη στην Εκκλησία, χωρίς να έχει τίποτε να πάρει από την Εκκλησία. Άξιος! Άξιος! muy especial para mí. Esperé mucho por esto, aunque no pareciera mucho, mucho tiempo, pasó mucho tiempo, eh, me cogió de sorpresa. El obispo regresó y me dijo, próximo domingo la ordenación de, 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 de Evangelo, o Diaco. Para mí fue un shock. Eh, simplemente me dejé llevar por lo que Dios me, 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 no sé, me, me guiaba. Hasta que, bueno, llegó la, la hora de la, de la verdad, la hora de, de, de la ordenación. Sentí que estaba llevado por ángeles en ese momento, pues, me fue muy, muy importante. La iglesia ortodoxa aquí en Cuba es su iglesia, hijo. Es la iglesia que nosotros, para nosotros solo abrimos las puertas para usted puede entrar. Y... ¿Qué más, ¿Qué más puedo decir sobre eso? Es eh, un momento único, no lo comparo con, con, otro, con otro momento. <ríe>